Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, count subarrays where max element appears at least k times. I really like this problem because I completely misinterpreted it and solved a slightly different problem, but that slightly different problem was similar enough to this that I was able to correct my original solution to solve this problem. So I will try to walk you through the mistake I made as well as explain this solution and why it works. We're given an integer array of nums. Let's take the first example. So this is our array and let's say that k is equal to two. We want to return the number of subarrays from nums. And remember, this is like every single subarray starting at the first element. This is every single subarray starting at the second element, et cetera, et cetera. So there's n squared subarrays. So we should be able to at least brute force it with an n squared solution. But we want to return all the subarrays and read this part carefully better than I did, where the maximum element appears at least k times in that subarray. And they don't mean the maximum in the subarray. They mean the maximum element of nums. So that's a little bit different than usually the way they ask the question. So that's what tripped me up. I was dynamically keeping track of what that maximum number is as our subarray changes. But the problem is actually easier than that. So don't overcomplicate things, even though the explanation, like the problem description, is actually pretty simple. I just didn't understand it. Maybe you got confused as well. But don't overcomplicate it. The maximum number is not going to change. We just want the global max of nums. So if we keep track of the maximum number, we can actually just find that by running max on the input array. That's never going to change. So in this case, it's always going to be three. If we're keeping track of what it is, it's three now. It's never going to change. It's always going to be three. What this problem is asking in this example is how many subarrays do we have where three appears at least two times, right? That's what K is in this example. So now it becomes a little bit easier. Still, let's go along the brute force approach because usually with array problems, brute forcing can give you a hint of how to solve the problem. So if we were starting from here, starting from one, well, we want to keep track of how many occurrences of three we have. So let's call that the count. I'll call it CNT for short. Originally, it's zero. We have one so far. That's not three. So count stays the same. Now we have a single occurrence of three. And I'll mark that here. Now we still have a single occurrence of three. And then when we add this element, we have two occurrences of three. So we have a single array that we just counted. So let's say I'm keeping track of the result over here. We originally were at zero, but now we found at least one subarray. But we actually found more than one subarray, didn't we? This works and this one also works, right? In other words, as soon as we find the kth occurrence of that element, what we really want to say is how many subarrays are ending at this position, right? Like that's kind of the intuition I'm getting at. But even if you can't figure it out, let's just continue to brute force it. Even if you can't make the jump to what the solution of this problem is going to be, let's continue brute forcing it. Okay, that's one subarray we counted. Now I'm going to add another element over here and that's three. We found another subarray. But even if this wasn't three, if this was one, wouldn't we have also found another subarray? Like we have two occurrences of three, adding more elements is going to always increase the number of subarrays, isn't it? Like once we found the kth three, we're good to go. So that's another hint of every time we add an element, like here with a valid window, we're really counting the number of subarrays that end at that element. And that's not super difficult. Let me show you how we can do it. First, let's go over a little bit of the intuition. This time there is a three here. Now we have three occurrences of three. So if we are counting the number of subarrays ending here, just like I kind of showed you here, like that would be this and that would be this. We stop here because this is where our three is. We have exactly two threes in our window and we need at least two threes. We can try shifting the pointer here. We can try eliminating this element, but then we run out of threes and we don't have enough. So we don't want to run into that case. And similarly, when we're counting the number of subarrays that end over here, we can do a similar thing. We can see that this window 
is valid. And so removing this value, we can see that this window is still valid. Removing this value, we can see this window is now still valid. We still have at least two occurrences of three. Removing this value, this window is still valid. But if, of course, if we remove this one, it will no longer be valid. So in this case, I counted one, two, three, and four windows ending at this element. Now, what's the pattern here? Because what I'm getting at at this point is that this problem can be solved with a sliding window. I know I didn't completely go over the brute force solution, but if you do want to code up the brute force solution, I don't blame you because the intuition can help you arrive at the sliding window solution. Basically, the difference is with a brute force solution, we would be starting, let's say, at this element. And we would keep shifting the right pointer until we get to a valid window. And then we'd count all of those valid windows. In other words, we're counting the number of valid subarrays starting at this element. We would then rinse and repeat starting from here. It would require us to iterate over the entire array though, which is why it would end up being an N squared solution because we're gonna do that for every single starting point. But if we invert our thinking, if we instead think about it from the perspective of ending at a particular element, we can do the sliding window. Let me show that to you. So starting here, this is our left pointer so far. Then our right pointer is also gonna be here. We're just counting how many threes we have. That's all we're keeping track of. We go here, now we have one three. We go here, still one three. Go here, now we have two occurrences of three. So I'm gonna update our count and it's now gonna be two. Now, at first, you might think that the solution is this. The solution is to keep shifting the left pointer until we can't shift it anymore. And that would be shifting it just once, right? We would say that, okay, this is a valid window that counts as one. Then we shift the left pointer over here. And now this is also a valid window, but we can't shift it anymore. So in reality, we counted uh, two valid windows. So now let's keep going. Let's now take our right pointer from here and shift it to the last element. Now this window is also valid, which is what we expected, right? It's never gonna become invalid now. We have at least two threes. Now we have three occurrences of three. Now, if you're doing it the naive way, if you're saying, okay, this is a valid window, that's plus one. So I'm gonna just mark the plus one over here and I'm gonna shift the pointer over here now. This is also a valid window, plus one down here and then shift the left pointer so that it's pointing here. Sorry, it's getting a little bit messy. Now this is also a valid window, so plus one again. We can't shift the left pointer anymore, so now we stop. And we also realized that the right pointer ends at the ending of the array. So what, what did we do? We counted five subarrays, but the answer was six. What did we miss? Let me replay that for you. When we got here, our left pointer is over here. But if this window is valid, of course, with 100% certainty, I know this window is also gonna be valid. Adding an element will never make a window invalid. So in reality, the solution is actually this. Don't increase the result as you shift the left pointer. Keep shifting the left pointer until it gets here. Like let's say in this case, the right pointer is here, left pointer is over here. So this is our valid window. And now is when we update the result. Now is when we say that where our left pointer stopped, the index would be zero, one, two, three. It would be three, right? The number of valid windows we have is gonna be three plus one, the left pointer plus one because one, two, three, four. We're counting the subarrays ending at this value and that extends all the way to the beginning of the array. It's always gonna extend to the beginning of the array because why not? We're trying to count all of the subarrays. At this step, what we would do is add a plus four. And if I replay the beginning portion as well, you'll see it works there as well. We had our right pointer over here. This was our first valid window. We shift the left pointer until it's here. And this is of course index one. So to the result, we're gonna add one plus one. So the result will then be set to two. And that's because this is the valid window and this is the valid window. So this is how I'm gonna be coding it up. It's gonna be a linear time sliding window solution 
We're not really needing any extra data structures because we can pretty much do that just by keeping track of a couple of variables. So that's going to be constant space. Let's code it up. So let's first start with those couple of variables, max number and max count, which is just going to be set to zero. So max number is going to be the maximum number, the global max. Max count is going to be zero. We have our left pointer. It's going to be initially set to zero. We're going to have our result, which is going to keep track of the count of subarrays. And that's what we're going to return. Now let's do that sliding window. So for R in range length of nums, we only want to update the count if the number at the right pointer is equal to the max number. So only in that case, let's update the max count by one. Okay. Now this part is a little bit confusing and there's a more concise way to write it. But for a beginner, I'm assuming that the more verbose way is going to be easier to understand because that's kind of how I explained it in the drawing explanation. There's two cases. One case is where the max count is greater than K. In that case, of course, we want to shift our left pointer because we want to minimize the window. So we're going to shift the left pointer, but also we want to update the max count. So if the number at the left pointer nums at left is equal to the max number, then decrement the max count. That's the case where we have too many occurrences of the max count. We're trying to shrink the window so that we can count the subarrays. The other case is we have exactly K occurrences of the max number. So max count is equal to K, but the value at the left pointer is not equal to the max number. So therefore the window can still be shrunk. So that would be if nums at left is not equal to the max number. And the other thing before we can even check this is just to make sure that the left pointer stays in bounds. So it's less than or equal to right. This is the other case where we shrink our window. Again, there is a more concise way to write this. But conceptually, it's just a little bit more complicated. So I just wanted to stick to this because, again, that's what I showed in the drawing explanation. Once this is over, it might be possible that this actually didn't even execute. It might be possible we still don't have the occurrences of the max number that we actually need. So we do have to check that here. We have to check, do we at least have this many K? And we'd always have exactly that many K because if we had more, we would have shrunk the window, of course. So if this is the case, then we will update the result. We're going to update the result by adding to it the left pointer plus one. This is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does. It's pretty efficient. I wanted to quickly show you how you can make this solution more concise in case that is something you're interested in because somebody always wants me to in the comments. So uh, consider this example and consider if we change this to the point where instead of having exactly K occurrences of three, we're actually going to keep shifting the pointer until we have K minus one occurrences. In other words, let's change this condition while max count is exactly equal to K. So we're never going to let max count exceed K. If it's exactly equal to K, we will then shift our window. So in this case where right pointer is here and then the left pointer is over here, we're going to shift the left pointer until it gets over here. And at this point, what would we add to the result? Well, I count one, two subarrays and left pointer happens to be at index two. So we can actually add to our result just the left pointer in this case. And then let's say we shift the right pointer over here. Now we have again exactly K occurrences of three. So we shift our left pointer by one until it's here and then we shift it again until it's here. So this is where our pointers would be. And now I count from here one, two, three, four subarrays and our left pointer happens to be at index four. So this approach works and you might be wondering, well, why do I still have this condition here? And that's actually a problem. I should probably remove this because after this loop is done, we'll never have max count equal K. So I'm actually going to get rid of that condition. And now you might be wondering, what if we haven't even reached this many occurrences of K? What if our window is like over here? Let's say our left pointer is here and our right pointer is over here. This window is not valid. But do you notice something? Our left pointer 
is at index zero. So if we haven't reached this many occurrences of the max number, we're always going to add zero to the result. So it really just works out. But this solution, I think, is just a little bit more unintuitive probably to arrive at. It's a little bit more complicated, but again, it does work and less code if that's what you prefer. I'll quickly run it to prove to you that it does work. And as you can see, it does. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.